this video is. If you'd like better performance from Moomoo Player for any game really, all you need to do is download it using the link down below, moomooplayer.com, install it and start it up. Just keep in mind that we're only really changing the system options here. There are some more options inside of the actual games themselves that usually allow you to uncap FPS and things like that. And of course, changing the in-game graphics settings from higher to lower options will usually result in better performance on most systems, especially low-end ones. If you'd like even more performance than just playing with the Android emulator options, in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11, Nvidia and other optimization guides to get way more performance from your system in general, including Moomoo Player. So without further ado, here's a couple of settings that you should change in Moomoo Player for the best performance. Now by default it uses keyboard and mouse, but in the top right up here you can change it to gamepad as well if you'd like to use a controller. Basically either of these emulates touchscreen inputs and things like that to make the experience as seamless as possible, though it won't always be perfect. You can adjust system volume up here, and as well using the three dots you can access your Android navigation menu, window management, a bunch of other useful tools, all the way down to device settings where we can customize the emulated device underneath. If we open up device settings while our download is completing in the background, for which the game's around seven and a half gig, inside of here we can customize performance for our system, change the number of CPU cores up to eight, change the amount of RAM based on what system RAM we have available, GPU strategy, and things like that. To get the best performance out of this, I'd recommend using Vulkan, which should give you slightly better performance, though DirectX may give you better compatibility and performance on certain systems, Vulkan should be the best. Performance settings, change this to custom, and raise the number of CPU cores pretty much as high as possible, utilizing as many as your system has available. That being said, check your task manager using Control Shift and Escape, or right clicking the start bar and choosing Task Manager, where on the Performance tab just over here, you can see the number of CPUs that you have. In my system, I have an Intel i9 14900HX, and it has all the way up to 32 threads, which we can utilize for the best performance. If you'd like it to get extra fancy and maybe squeeze a tiny bit more performance out of it, you can Google your processor's name, open up Intel or AMD's website, assuming you have one of those, scroll down and look to see how many performance cores and efficiency cores you have. I have 24 physical cores, 32 total threads, half of the threads are efficiency cores over here, which only have one thread per core, and we have eight performance cores with two threads each, meaning we have 16 performance threads. Inside of Moomoo Emulator, I would therefore choose 16 here, giving access to pretty much only the performance cores on our system, raising the performance for anything that runs inside of it, leaving efficiency cores for Windows, background processes like Discord, and things like that. Then the amount of RAM that you can give it is usually around six or so for the best performance, but you can actually give it much more, even if it might not be used. If you once again check your task manager using Control Shift and Escape, on the performance tab, seeing how much memory you have and then deciding how much to give the game. Obviously more is usually better, but beyond six gigs, you will have diminishing returns. If you have a ton of system RAM available, as in currently not in use, you could give it a lot of that and forget about it. If you've only got say 12 gigs on your system, of which eight is free, I'd recommend giving the game probably six or so, leaving two for the rest of your system, Discord, etc. If you're really running low with eight gigs, four of it's being used by Windows, you can only really choose Use for here, and that's that. Then the GPU strategy, auto tuning is the best option here, and then forced use of discrete graphics card, I definitely recommend having this turned on. If you're on a laptop with an integrated GPU and a dedicated GPU, this is especially important, so it uses the right graphics card for much better performance. Finally, at the very bottom, smart memory optimization, a relatively new option. You can enable this for less RAM usage while you're playing games and things like that, but if it impacts performance, giving you stuttering, freezes, and weird things like that, make sure to turn this off. For me, I'll turn this on. Under the display tab over here, you can leave it at whatever your display's resolution is, for example, 2K or 4K, but if you set it down to 1080p, you should see a big improvement in performance with hopefully minimal loss to quality. FPS settings, you can cap your FPS here, especially important if you're on a handheld or mobile device. If you're plugged in, you can usually crank this all the way up and enjoy some extra frame headroom if your PC is actually making that many. You can enable the FPS counter right over here so you can see what performance you're actually getting. VSync, I'd recommend leaving off unless you're getting screen tearing. Then screen settings, here we can adjust the brightness and apply a 
color filter to it. Common is fine here. Window position and style. You can remember the last position if you play in windowed, but that's fine. Window rotation, multi-tab mode, and Mumu cursor are all fine to leave on. On the sound tab over here, you can auto mute when it's muted. And if you wish, disable system sound from Android background processes and things like that. This should slightly reduce CPU usage. However, the Android volume controls, which we saw with the button up here, will no longer work. For me, that's fine. I'll turn this on for a slight boost in performance. Microphone and speaker are configurable here. Disk, you can clean up the disk once your installation is finished, though most of the time there's not too much that you need to clear. Under the network tab, you can change how the network driver works. For the most part, it'll just use whatever network connection you're connected to right now. But you can install a driver here, enable bridge mode, and change how the Android device appears on your network. Model, you can adjust how your emulated Android device appears. By default, it chooses an Asus ROG Phone 9, but you can leave this at whatever you want, really. Down here is just some extra information about it. Finally, GPU model, for the most part, you won't need to worry about this, but you can choose a different model presets here, just in case the games auto-optimize to different physical hardware. Usually, I'd choose high here if you have a really powerful graphics card in your system. This should tell the game that, hey, you can actually crank up the graphics settings and you can enjoy a couple more FPS with a better looking game, which is why I would change this here. If you're trying to emulate the game on a lower powered system, it's probably the best to set this down to low. So again, games can auto optimize for whatever hardware you have available. Shortcuts, you can customize how the system works, such as navigation, window management, and things like that. The boss key over here, Alt Q by default, will hide the emulator if you're wondering what that was. Finally, other, you can keep apps alive in the background when you minimize them. You can enable root if you like to customize Android system settings that you wouldn't otherwise, ADB debug, etc. Associate APK files when it's turned on means that whenever you download an APK file off the internet, you can double click it and it should open inside of this emulator. That's it. Device diagnostics, you can read a bit about the emulated device here, but for now at least we've customized everything we need to. As the game is still downloading and we change some options, I'll leave this as later just so it doesn't restart right now and you can see we're currently getting a solid 60 while we're downloading but we'll wait until we're actually in the game which could take some time to get to if you'd like to get frame generation working or something like that i'd highly recommend checking out my lsfg or lossless scaling guide where you can point it to this emulator and generate frames all the way up to 240 360 or whatever your monitor is actually displaying for most systems i wouldn't recommend frame generation as that may add extra input latency and if you're getting more than enough fp Yes, it's fine anyways. I think I'm stuck at a solid 60 here because if I pause audio and graphics inside of here, we can customize our rendering quality, which I'll crank it all the way up to 120. HD textures are fine, ultra quality, etc. Sounds pretty good. Unpausing. Yeah, there we go. We're getting a solid 120, which is really good. The keyboard and mouse input is really snappy. There's nothing too wrong about this. It feels like a native PC game, even if it's a mobile game. And that's it. At this point, all of your Android games should be running quite a bit better, including as well other apps that you could be running that aren't necessarily gaming. And of course, a couple of these options do need you to play around with them a bit just to see what performs better. For example, direct Decks and Vulcan. These can be different on a game to game basis, so you'll need to test with each different game to see if something helps more than others. But, Jim, that's really that. So, hopefully, you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.